If you've ever made anything in Photoshop, Premiere, Resolve, or pretty much any editing program, you've come across a drop-down list of a bunch of different blending modes, and then you go through each of the blending modes to see what they do. And when you land on one that looks somewhat good on your image, then you'd leave that drop-down menu and do not think about it again until you need to use it again for something. And then you go through each one, one by one, to see what they do. That's how I used these blend modes for like 10 years. So today we're gonna go through all of the blend modes, which ones I use, which ones I do not use. And I made a bit of a gray card color chip chart here to help us better understand how these blend modes are actually working on our uh, images. And all of the assets are from today's video sponsor, Artlist, but more on them later. First up, what are blend modes and why are they broken up into different sections? Blend modes allow you to blend your pixels together of your image, depending on which blend mode you have selected. The first section is your normal. This is your regular base layer for all of your starting points for pretty much all your assets in all editors. The first section is darken and this will make white pixels transparent. The second section is lighten and this will make black pixels transparent. The next section is about contrast, and this will make 50% gray transparent. The next section is inversion and cancellation, and honestly, I don't use these very often. However, they can be pretty helpful in some situations. This last section is different component modes, and while these seem a little bit confusing at first, if you understand HSL from pretty much any video editor program, you can jump into these very quickly and understand what they do, and they are very powerful once you get a handle on them. I don't know why I said editing program like that, editing program. First up, normal. This is just your regular baseline image. Next is dissolve, and I never use this, but reducing the opacity will dissolve random pixels and have a bit of a noise effect. Uh, again, I haven't really used this one. Now onto the darkening blend modes. I mostly use multiply here, but it is good to know how the other settings work as well. First up, we have darken. Darken looks at the information on the red, green, and blue channels and keeps whichever one is darker. That means white will become transparent and the rest of the current layer will be compared to the bottom layer. Next is Multiply. Multiply looks at the current layer and the below layers for a darker color. Black will stay black and white will be transparent and not show up. All colors in between will make the image darker. We can see as the gray scale here, this part will make the image darker of, until it gets uh, completely black. I use multiply all the time and oftentimes it's a little bit too dark and I have to decrease the opacity to make it a little bit lighter. Next up is color burn. Color burn darkens the layer by taking the current layer and increases the contrast between the lower layers. This will always create a darker image and white is unaffected here. This is a similar effect if you're using the burn tool in Photoshop or Lightroom. The burn tool is more selective and you can be careful with it. This blend mode is completely a global change unless you make masks and all this stuff. I rarely use this tool. Linear burn darkens the image by taking the current layer and decreasing the brightness between the lower layers. The darker the value, the darker the image. White is unaffected here still. Since the brightness is being decreased, this will always be darker than multiply or color burn. Next, we have darker color. Darker color behaves very similar to darken, comparing all of the RGB channels of the current layer and keeping whichever one is darker. I've honestly never found a good use case for using darker color over darken. So uh, in my mind, I just write this one off. I'm sure there is a use case out there, but I have not ran into it yet. If you have, let me know in the comments down below. With the darken blend modes out of the way, the lighten blend modes are much easier to understand because they do not darken the image, they do the exact opposite. They lighten the image. In this section, I mostly use screen, but again, it is important to understand what each of them do. A video example of this would be to use lighten to remove a black video in overlay graphics. It works like a charm and you don't need a PNG or a video with an alpha channel. In this example, we have the embers flying over the car and all we had to do was change the blend mode to screen. 
For Lighten, this looks at the red, green, and blue channels below the current layer and keeps whichever one is lighter. That means black will become transparent and the rest of the current layer will be compared to the bottom layer and keep whichever is lighter. Next up is Screen, and Screen is the exact opposite of Multiply. Screen takes the current layer's colors and multiplies the inverse to the other layer's colors for a lighter color. What that means is white will stay white, black will be transparent, and all colors in between will make the image lighter depending on the luminosity. Darker areas of the current layer will have a very small brightening effect, while the lighter areas will have a much larger lightening effect, and white will stay 100% pure white. I use screen all the time and I use screen in conjunction with opacity because sometimes it's too bright. So if I wanna darken it, I'll just lower the opacity down. And if it's not bright enough, you can just duplicate the layer and adjust the opacities until you get the brightening effect that you want. Now on to color dodge. Color Dodge brightens by taking the current layer and decreases the contrast with other layers. This will always create a lighter image and black is unaffected by this mode. This is a similar effect to using the Dodge tool in Photoshop or Lightroom, uh, but again, it's just a Dodge tool of the entire current layer. So if you have a lot of things to Dodge, this could be good, but I rarely do this and I just prefer to use the regular Dodge tool. So again, I rarely use this one. Linear Dodge brightens the image by taking the current layer and increasing the brightness of the lower layers. The brighter the value, the brighter the image. Black is unaffected here and does not brighten the image at all. Since the brightness is being increased here, this will be brighter than screen or color dodge. Last, we have Lighter Color. Lighter Color behaves very similarly to Lighter by comparing all the RGB channels to the current layer and keeping whichever is lighter. This does not blend the two layers together. As you can see, we still have white and gray here, but it compares the current layer to the lower layers and keeps whichever is brighter. Before we jump into my favorite contrast blend modes, I'd like to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, Artlist. Artlist has over 400,000 high quality assets for you to use in your personal and commercial videos. They make it easy to find music and sound effects that help your viewer experience your work. Their tools make it easy to find the exact song to fit the vibe of your work, and they have thousands of songs to choose from, and discovery is a breeze. You can browse their playlists of songs if you're looking for inspiration, or if you have something specific in mind, you can use their filters to choose a genre and refine your results with mood keywords. You can even get as granular as selecting which kind of instruments you want in the song, choosing if you want vocals or not, and adjusting the BPM. A feature that I love is the Similar Songs button. Finding a song that's almost right, but clicking the Similar Songs button will give you a whole list of songs that are similar to that one that makes discovery very easy. Artlist also has footage as well, and all of the footage in this video was from their catalog. All the footage is high quality, but I particularly love sorting by their staff picks. Discovering the perfect sound effects is another reason why I love Artlist. They have a huge collection of high quality sound effects that help you tell your story. Artlist has an extensive catalog of sound effects to help you take your videos to the next level. Artlist also has an AI voiceover feature that helps you bring your stories to life with a wide range of different voices. From voices that speak with precision and elegance to a relatable down to earth guy and everything in between. For creators, you can link your social channels to your Artlist account for automatic copyright clearing of their royalty free music and remove the headache of copyright claims. Artlist has over 400,000 assets available and more are being added constantly, so you'll be sure to find what you're looking for. If you'd like to check it out, Artlist is offering two free months if you use the link in my description. Thank you, Artlist, for sponsoring this video. Now for my favorite blend modes, the contrast blend modes. These use 50% gray as their target. Anything brighter than 50% gray is lightened. Anything darker than 50% gray is darkened. And in general, 50% gray is transparent, with one exception I'll get to at the end. A great example of this in video is to use a contrast blend mode when using a grain overlay. The darker and lighter parts of the grain will create nice contrast, but the middle gray will be transparent. I typically adjust the opacity as well, but that kind of depends on the grain you're using. Now onto my favorite blend mode, overlay. Overlay takes anything 50% gray or darker and makes it multiplied to use a darker value. Anything 50% gray and over uses screen to make it lighter. This is fantastic for adding contrast to an image. 
While it's not as aggressive as using Multiply or Overlay on their own, Overlay makes 50% gray transparent. So black darkens the image while white brightens the image. I find myself adjusting the opacity slightly less if this is too aggressive for the image. If Overlay is too aggressive, Soft Light functions the same but is more diffused. If the value is darker than 50% gray, the darker will become closer to black without becoming pure black like it was burned. Lighter than 50% gray will become lighter and closer to white without becoming pure white, like you use the dodge tool. This can be confusing, but I remember soft light is a softer version of overlay, and hard light is a more aggressive version of overlay and soft light. Hard light is like shining a bare bulb spotlight on something based on the current layer. If the value is lighter than 50% gray, the image will be brightened similar to using the screen blending mode. If the value is darker than 50% gray, the image will be darkened like you're using the multiply blending mode. This isn't exactly the same as using multiply or screen, but it's close. And because of that, we can have 100% black and 100% white, while 50% gray is transparent. Vivid Light is even more aggressive than Hard Light. Vivid Light increases or decreases the contrast by dodging values brighter than 50% gray and burning values darker than 50% gray. This is good for increasing or decreasing contrast in an image. However, I always adjust the opacity or fill when using Vivid Light. Linear Light is also very aggressive. This increases or decreases the brightness based on the current layer. If the value is darker than 50% gray, the image is darkened by decreasing the brightness. If the value is lighter than 50% gray, the image is brightened by increasing the brightness. Again, I don't use Vivid Light very much, but when I do, I always use the opacity or fill to dial in exactly what I need. Pin Light replaces colors depending on the current layer's value. 50% gray is transparent, and black and white show up on the current layer. This is pretty much reserved for washing out an image with color or special effects. I've never really used this mode too much. Hard mix is another one that I've literally never used and I had to look up the definition for it. Hard mix adds RGB channels of the current layer to the base layer colors. If the result is greater than 255, it's pure black. If it's lower, it's pure white. All values are either RGB or CMYK. Uh, there's probably a use for this blend mode, but I just don't know what it is and I've never used it. If you know, please let me know in the comments down below. Next up, we have inversion blend modes and these ones are pretty stylized. Next up, we have difference and difference inverts everything based on their brightness value. This ranges from black not inverting at all to full inversion of 100% white. Exclusion is very close to difference. Black does not invert the image at all. White is full inversion, but 50% gray remains unchanged. Subtract inverts the values. Black has no effect, but the lighter colors darken the image. Despite what math says, divide is the opposite of subtract here. White has no effect while the darker colors brighten the image. Next up, we have component blend modes, and these ones are really helpful for recoloring images. You just have to know which one to use when. And for this uh, example, I made a gradient here, and this is just a spectrum of colors to help better illustrate what this is actually doing. Starting with hue, hue only replaces the hue of the image. It does not change the saturation or the luminosity. Hue can be an interesting way to recolor images that already have color on them. However, black and white images will have no effect because there is no hue on them. Saturation takes the hue and luminosity from the base layers, but it takes the saturation from the current layer. Our example here is pretty wild because we have this spectrum going. So I'm going to turn this one off and just use this uh, very colorful vibey image to show what hue and saturation is actually doing. Uh, we can see these darker spaces here, and this is where the dark spot is on this raft. So this is taking the saturation of this current layer here and applying it to the layers below it. So it's a very cool way to get a interesting effect if you have multiple images you want to blend together. Now going back to our spectrum layer, if we change this to color, now we can see what color does here. Color keeps the luminosity of the image while adopting the hue and saturation of the current layer. This is fantastic for recoloring black and white images without a lot of color in them. 
We can see this one is actually pretty great on this first Dolomites image because without this layer, it's actually a little bit flat color wise. But if we add the spectrum layer with the color blend mode, it adds tons of color to this image. So if you want to take this even further, you can add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, decrease the saturation, and then it's an even more noticeable effect. Uh, if we go to other images, now it's showing up a lot. Understanding how to use the color blend mode can really help you out for recoloring images. Luminosity adjusts the luminosity of the current layer, and it preserves the hue and saturation of the lower layers. This is great for applying to a curves layer or any kind of an adjustment layer where you can specifically call out individual colors and you can set your layer of your curves to luminosity and you can only target that specific color range. Pretty cool. When it comes to using blend modes, I tend to use multiply, screen, overlay, hard light, and soft light. Knowing how those work and how to use them will save you time and make you a better editor and maybe even influence how you make things in the future. If you know that you can knock out middle gray, but you wanna preserve the highlights and shadows of something, maybe you'll choose a contrast blend mode to do that in the future. What did you guys think of this video? Let me know what you think. Was it too nerdy? Was it not nerdy enough? Um, I'm sure there's a nerdy video on screen now if you wanna check that one out. And thank you guys for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.